have to have a specific draft and that it'll matter whether windows are open or doors are open in a particular amount to shoot it up the flu. The flu. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's all true. Yeah. yeah. And because electricity and uh, gas don't really put off the same smoke. Oh, they don't leave a taste in the food. That makes sense. Your your wood smoke flavor, your wood smoke would flavor the food you were eating. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course it would. Yeah, like so every you would single use thing cherry, you apple, mesquite, or things like that. Yeah, that's... Well, it's saying that, you know, that's, that's okay for taste on certain foods, like by our standards now, but can you imagine in the time always having every dish you had, no matter what it was, it was every single dish you had flavor. was going to be wood smoke flavor. Well, sure. Well, you would, your capes would taste like wood. That's mm -hmm. why you wouldn't want to use an apple, you know, or something like that when you were making a cake if you had access to it. But you wouldn't always have access to that. Sometimes you'd be burning pine or whatever the hell you had. Again, yeah. it's the difference between then and now. Uh, the survival imperative then uh, guided your decision. So... Uh, you would do what you had to. Well, yes, yeah, plain of course. And plain and simple. You would do what you needed out of necessity. You would use what you had. Well, we've talked about that several times. That necessity skew. Like we don't have that understanding of necessity the way that that it was then. That you know, we kind of forget that life isn't always so easy. Oh yeah, I, I, in fact, that's I say sometimes our, our current level of technology hasn't uh, subjugated our imperative for survival. It's made it e even that much more important because we're kind of in between. Yes. Well, I don't know that we're in between. I think we're on the far end of it, but I think that we are going to backslide here soon. Uh, needing to know these skills and so many people are going to have forgotten how to do them. Well that's why I'm saying we're in between. The system that supports our daily life is pretty delicate and the people who live under the mass energy consumption, so the, the people in society consume the majority of the world's energy, Yes. Uh, because of the way that we live we don't have those skills that would be, would be required and if, if that stuff disappeared tomorrow then we would be if we even look back, not we're not even looking back 200 years to the time of James Townsend or Mrs. Crocombe. We're looking back just, you know, at this point, 100 years to the 1920s. And the, the fall of, um, of the economy in, into the Great Depression shortly after, you know, that that you know that was where the porch sitting gun toting granny and grandpa that were protecting their garden and their livestock because people were like, starving to death people yeah. look at those pictures they have yeah. no idea that the reason that granny and grandpa were sitting on the front porch whittling and and sewing with the gun beside them was for survival not for oh well, not because giggles. they were just backwards and racist <laughs> Like people don't don't understand the history behind the images that they portray. I mean, were were Granny and Grandpa sitting there with their gun in their rocking chairs on the front porch? Yes. They were not doing it because the house wasn't air conditioned. Although sometimes that probably was more comfortable to be on the porch. Oh yeah, definitely. It did. It yeah, was. That's way. It was because, <laughs> you know. Billy Bob from the next mountain over ran out of food two weeks ago, and now he's sneaking in to steal the chickens. Oh yeah, there was mass layoffs, and I mean, you know, there were there before there were children working in factories before uh, it happened, and there was mass layoffs. So there was all these lines of people who were literally starting death, and everyone was losing their homes and property. So you would have mm -hmm. these huge cities, these temporary roving cities of of shacks, shanty town. Yeah. It's where shanty, you know, shanty town comes from, especially out Midwest, you know, coming out of the Dust Bowl. People were dirt fucking poor out there anyway because all the, the livestock destroyed all the agriculture. That and the loss of the beavers. But... Uh, you know, some of this guy's cooking on the ground with rocks and, you know, 
I, I think uh, Shut the door by the this point, the patent for the uh, pot-bellied stove had already been out there. So he should have had access to cast iron stuff. But it goes to show, too, that that was a luxury oh, item like not afforded the regular people. So the regular people by that point still couldn't afford a big chunk of cast iron on their... Uh, yeah. In terms of cooking. Well... And, and already had uh, earthenware materials, which were much cheaper. And probably much more functional, uh, not quality-wise, but accessibility-wise. It's hard to bake a cake in a earthenware? pot belly stove. I'm sure that they had, they had the ability to make Dutch work. ovens out of clay pots. There's cast as well. I. I'm just saying, I, I think that we as a society have lost out on not having apprenticeship anymore, being so test and, and knowledge focused versus actual ability focused and on some of the necessity learnings that we don't do anymore. Gardening has been lost a great deal. Uh, cooking for certain, you know, really cooking, not just, you know, ordering a box from Good Eats and throwing it in the oven, but actually learning to cook. All of those arts are being lost more and more. Well, with the advent of automation, it's, it's going to happen that much more. Um, people are talking about, you know, like truck drivers. Um, you know, losing their jobs, and in some countries that's already happening. Um, you know, the next things to go to be automated is probably going to be agriculture. We already have automated agriculture, so I can see that starting to be adopted in mass. So one of those large sections of labor that are going to be lost, both migrant labor and just small privatized farming probably, it's going to all lose out to automation. But the question is, you know, is the is the machine capable of reading the nuances? Well, we can yet. do we can do um, e even better now. We control the nuances, so we do what uh, humans have always done. We um, change the environment to suit specifically what we need. So we don't have to worry about the lamb being taken by um, environmental impact because the lamb is grown in a bag. I understand that, but at the same time, what we've seen repeatedly throughout history is that our manipulation of nature ends up in a larger disaster That's than the original impact. So we decide that we need to grow corn in mass or wheat in mass and and that the beavers are flooding our, our land and therefore we need to destroy their dams and kill them off. Oh poop now there's no water retention and we turn a giant green pasture into a desert god only knows the consequence of growing lambs in bags can't, like i can't tell you what kind of an impact bagged lamb is going to have but we're already doing it I'm, I, just, I'm just saying and corn will be net i'm sure they're going to figure out a way to grow corn in vats too that I, I'm saying, when we as human beings think that we know better than God or know better than the natural design for those products, we screw things up so significantly that we cause ourselves more problem than the original problem we were trying to combat by manipulating the system. Unfortunately, we can't be just golden children who play around in the garden because the garden is lost so we're kind of damned if we do damned if we don't and you know I think it is amazing the amount of provision that is out there naturally that we don't have to go to the grocery store for I mean seriously you can eat dandelions you can eat roses you can eat vegetables and fruits you can eat many of the things that are just sitting you can grow that right in your in apartment your in an urban landscape too. You don't need to um, just forage um, like a paleo. I mean, you can grow those things in pots on a on a balcony yes. and have it right in your own um, urban landscape or on a roof. A lot of people are doing that on roofs. Yeah, I've seen that in New York landscape. that there are a lot of roof gardens. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people are doing that. Open space gardens. I and I don't necessarily disagree that that's an option. I'm just saying that 
we forget that our ability to eat was there before money. We, before we could divide out the labor and, and say, okay, I'm going to pay you $10 to go and garden and you're going to pay me $10 to fix your buggy. Before any of that happened, we were still eating because nature provided, well, God provided. I think at some point, um, you know, either, like I say, with the whole Mufasa thing, that we should blame Mufasa because he was the first person to say it or first one to say, all that you see before me is mine. Mm. Um, so, you know, maybe it was that first person said, you know, I'm king, so I now own all this. I ownership. Or maybe people just found out that they could start taking, just take whatever they wanted. Um, and so, you know, maybe... Um, maybe people just thought that stuff was going to run out. So because they thought there was never going to be enough for everyone, that someone had to start controlling it. But for well, whatever reason, somewhere I'm human sure beings that, like, decided that someone of, had to control the whole thing and there had to be some way to, to keep men in line. I'm sure that like many of the things that we currently have, the idea was that that there needed to be... A protection for people from themselves you, you know you're not smart enough to decide whether or not to put a seatbelt on yourself we need to create a law that says you're required to wear a seatbelt you're not smart enough to decide whether or not you should shoot off a gun we're gonna make laws regulating that you have to tell us whether or not you have a gun you're not smart enough to figure out whether or not you have a hot cup of coffee so we're going to make a law that says it has to be labeled to protect you because you're not smart enough to figure these things out on your own I I understand that there are people who failed to show intelligent levels to figure those things out but as a mass whole if I don't want to wear a seatbelt I'm only killing me yeah, you sound, so, sound like a libertarian now, uh, Kelly. And you know, and I, I agree. Them. And you'll consider probably like the Bible. It to hear that's a modern context, yes. putting historical context. I'm sure somebody rose up and said, "I'm going to go club my neighbor and take their." Yes, land. at which and point there was a so creation of someone it, said, yes. "We got to yes. do something about this." There, there was, um, <laughs> and, and what was created uh, was a system of towns. It was it was during the twelve tribes. This tribe was responsible for this. This tribe was responsible for that. If you ended up in this area of land, if you murdered somebody, yeah, okay, I and, it was and you made then. it to this area, then then they couldn't seek blood retribution. But if you didn't make it to that area, they could kill you. There there were rules put in place for that because mankind couldn't seem to manage on their own how to. Maybe is that is that the root of, of all evil? What the rules, guidelines? The need for them, not not the rules. The fact that we need them. Or yes, the fact, the that, fact that someone that thought yes. that we need them. Or evil, we evil do. we got the need for for the rules. We only had one rule to start with. There was one rule. Leave the apple alone. Leave the apple alone. <laughs> it wasn't even an apple, but yes. Leave the apple alone. That was the only rule. And we Jeez. couldn't manage that one. Oh, you can do anything you want. Be naked, run around, whatever. None of that mattered. Just don't eat this apple. Uh, that apple was delicious, that one. That apple was delicious. And, you know, I have to wonder. Okay, so here's my oh, curiosity. Here's I mean, my, my weird brain. Because it doesn't talk about it. It doesn't say how long they they existed in Eden prior to being expelled. It doesn't say, you know, how many years, how many decades, how many millennia they were alive in Eden. So who's to say they didn't survive for millions of years they in did. Eden? They did. They with were, the one rule, don't eat the apple, and were, then one day... They were in bags. They, they were, were in bags. bags. They were not in They bags. were in bags! And the apple was uh, growth regulators, and it was hormones. And then when the hormones broke into the system, they, they popped the bags, and then that's when they popped out. Oh, for the love, darling. I love you. 
That's it's full not circle. Not you don't think this stuff is linear, do you? Why no, you... nothing in no nothing in Jewish Ouroboros. writing is actually linear. <laughs> Jewish writing is Back like... to full circle here. It was bags, Kelly, and the lamb was bled white as snow, and it burst from the bags in a furious clamor as never for be heard upon the earth. Wow, dear. No, Jewish writing is more like a loop-de-loop uh, roller coaster because it always goes up and back and around. What do you think, Evelyn? Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, I think it's the pay attention to me or I'm going to flip and flop and bounce and twist and turn. She's only it. flipping because I was tickling her. No, she was flipping and flopping before that. She oh. was down in her I'm a frog monkey stance. Well, I wasn't paying attention to that because I don't have a frog or a monkey. I do have a little girl, though. I have a des great desire to pick her up and sit her down properly when she does that, which does not make me very happy. Thank you. Did you have breakfast? Good morning. Yeah. What did you have for breakfast? Well, the cookie cereal, but I had it way early. Cookie yeah, crisp. would that be at 3 o'clock this morning when you... Uh-oh. It's not my butt. Okay, yes. anyway, carry on. Did you have that at 3 o'clock this morning when you got up to decide to go potty and come knock on our door? Come and knock on my door. I've been waiting for you. You're not helping. <laughs> Did you go back to bed at 3 o'clock when I told you to go back to bed? Like yesterday? This morning when you got up and you came and knocked on my door and Highly. said, I need soap? I doubt that. Did you go back to sleep? She's looking puffy-eyed and she's not quite sure what you're talking about, so I doubt I would say she's been up since? Been yeah. Up. If you go out and you ask Alex to please cook your muffin for 35 seconds in the microwave, it's sitting in front of the microwave. Girl, you're getting, love you, love you, love you, love you. You're getting raccoon-eyed again. You, That's because she's not sleeping. You need to start sleeping. Okay? You're not some night bandit who raids trash cans. Yeah. This <laughs> came right. back and started happening again after our one visit overnight. The one visit they had overnight at Christmas. She hasn't been sleeping properly since. Well, and they, you know, she mentioned that they sh shouldn't stay over there or something because they don't sleep. So in the future, that sounds like that might be something we may need to pay attention to. And I get that. I'm sorry that I think you should have more responsibility they, if, for... Well, you know, hell, you can tell that fish to fly all its fucking life, but all it's going to do is flippity flop in the water. Can it until it listens? It, 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 no. Unless you want a fish sandwich or tuna or something. No. I definitely don't want that. Thank you. That tuna can stay in its own case. That's not what I meant. That is just gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're talking about actual fist fighting. Well, I thought metaphorically. My bad. No. Beat the fish then. That's not going to do anything good either. I don't know. Stick it in a cage. Beat it regularly for a few months, then start feeding it nicely. It'll stock home. Just saying, you can tell them what what responsibility is to you all day long till you're blue in the face and it's never gonna change I know. anything. I know, I got it, I'm just. And I am so tired of being that dead horse, Kelly, that I am through. Hi, hey, mama. I'm out of y'all, I was gonna say. Okay. Is my door open again? I love the pictures of the old kitchens. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, but I do have some 501. I said seven. Wall hanging pots, pans, and just a couple shelves. They don't have a ton of plates and dishes and 
powder. It's just barely visible. I need my glasses. He's talking about how the old kitchens were overrun with pests and rodents. Well, and yeah. So you had to keep your pots and pans flipped upside down. Yeah, so that they couldn't get in or poop in them or you'd get diseases and die. <coughs> yes. Yeah, I can really see the pattern on your <laughs> he just, Instead of saying poop in them, he said mess them up. <laughs> Cellars. Oh, that's what we have. We have a cellar. Not a pantry, a cellar. Spring houses. cuts could be uh, salt cured and then hung dry and it would keep for a long time and then you would reconstitute it a brine. He's also talking about the fact things go bad in just a day or so. Well yeah if you didn't preserve them. Because yeah. they don't have they didn't refrigerate. Well yeah. Yeah. Well most of your food would be recycled and recooked and recycled and recooked every day. So peas porridge hot, peas porridge cold, peas porridge in a pot, nine days old. Well that makes sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you really wouldn't want to keep a, I mean, you keep a stew going for a couple of days, but you get to a point now where it needs to go to the pigs and you need to start your next meal. I'm just saying, not everything had to be refrigerated. No, no, not everything would. Well, like, you know, some of it, well, your leftovers, would, again, you would get chopped up or turned into your chop sueys. Chop suey. Recyclables, the same six ingredients over and over and over again. <laughs> Tacos. Oh, my controller's gonna die. Figures. Fancy people had pumps on the inside. Oh yeah, yep. Running water inside the house was definitely a luxury. Hello? Is anybody here?
has to be someone here. Not good. David, Marvin, you there? I found a way out. It's in here. Oh no. Send reinforcements. East hallway. I gotta find that guy. Oh, you don't wanna find that guy. He's already dead. I should have a knife. Where's my knife? Oh, in this game, you gotta have that knife. I know, I remember. Gotta have the knife. If I don't, I can't stab people to death. Mm. What? What? He's already killed his phone battery. Why you say that? Because it's off. Like, he put it from bed. He's been using it. Matilda. He named his gun Matilda. Isn't Matilda? yeah? Isn't that the name of some book character? Not some precocious kiddo who does uh, solves mysteries. Yeah, like. No. See. Stairs because those other doors look locked too. It looked like every door downstairs on the map was locked. And uh... oh no, I take that back. I guess we already looked at this. I did, but... Oh, there we go. I don't... Yeah, that's the spade door again. Durr. It's 
Yeah. Is there a ramp on the left? So, yeah, there there was a ramp on the left. It's like right here. I just ran down. I mean, I came in the came in the door, left, up the ramp, spade door. Looks like I can go back outside, actually. There we go. Right here, nothing. There's a goddess statue. I gotta do something to that goddess statue or the tape box. about everything. Yeah, but that's not so Okay, so I mean, this is r right here where at the map and it shows all the doors locked door another spade door this is the main hall here and this is oh it says I can keep going back out So I'm just looking at places on the map where it shows I can go. Like, that's locked, that's locked, that's locked. 
You know, that's locked. So obviously, I'm not doing... I can't even find a knife. Maybe I need to make a save file first or something. I don't know. It won't even let me save. Let me do anything on there. Ink ribbon? Nope. Nope. This is the demo too. Did you look demo version? This is RE2 one shot demo. It's not the actual, the old school game. A little different. Probably for the sake of the demo. Got 30 minutes to beat it. Playtime? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. And I've looked all over. It's got to be something with the statue up here. And I can't get all three of the, um... Something's opening, but I hear it too, but I'm not sure what it is or where it is. And it's not really, it's got to be something to do with this thing, though. Got to be. And it's got to be some combination of the three. And that's the door I need to unlock. And it says keep out, so maybe I should op see if I can open it. Probably should check that first, huh? Okay. Don't go under there. Don't don't do it. Check your corners. Okay. So we do a sweep.
In this room? Yeah. Mm. In the whatever wing area you went into. Not yet. I passed some lockers leaning over. Yeah, go move those around. Okay. I don't know what this place is. Oh, it's a courtroom. That's right, this is a police station. Duh. Oh. There should be two rooms on the left, the floor, and after the lockers. Oh, cool. Thank you, Wifepedia. But that releases the dogs. I just got one door there. I just came out of that one. And then there's another door over here, but I didn't seem to want to open it. Okay. I just came out of there. Thank you, my dear. Jesus. It doesn't even look like there's a lock on it. How do I open it? I shoot that shit off. Open up! Hurry! Open up! Open this contact door! I ain't opening your door. Inside, there's a guy who wants to eat my face. I'll get you out. Please, give me your hand. Help me. I got you. Give me your other hand. Yeah.
hamburger. Let's see, who builds crazy mechanical? You should have your, yeah, there's your medallions. Look, the goddess statue, the three medallions. I see. The lion's the crown, the harp. Or the the ram, the lion, the crown, the harp, the bird, no, I think it's the, the babe. Lion, the lion, the harp, and the bird. Yeah. Who builds this crap in a police station anyway? Oh yeah, umbrella. Duh. <laughs> oh. Zombie cop! Oh god, he's eating my face! Oh, I'm toast. Oh no. Oh god, shoot me. Just put me out of my misery. I don't want to be a walker. Healy spray? You can cure zombieitis with Healy spray? Apparently. Where is he? Oh god, he's right there. What the? Where's my knife? Yeah. See, I think in these old games, when you reload, you actually drop the clip. So if you reload before you shot all your bullets, you actually lose ammo. And ammo is precious. before they turn into zombie chow. Ooh, she ugly. Combat knife, yeah, 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 that's what I need. That's what I need. So. What the heck is that for? I'm so bored. Okay, what's this? Dead space. You're safe. For now. Oh, damn, son, you don't look so good. Marvin Brown. Leon Kennedy. There was another officer I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Here. <clears throat> I'm sure you did what you could, Leon. Does anyone know what started this? Not a clue. But honestly, all you need to know is that this place will eat you alive if you aren't careful. Yeah, well, I was supposed to start last week, and I got a call to stay away. I wish I'd come here sooner. You're here now, Leon. That's all that matters. Okay, Lieutenant. I'm ready. Hopefully, you'll be able to find a way out of this station. That officer you met earlier, Elliot. He thought this secret passageway might do the trick. <laughs> mm. This is good news. We can get you to a hospital. No, no, I am not the priority here. Lieutenant, I'm not just gonna leave you here. I'm giving you an order, rookie. You save yourself first. I'd come with you, but I'd just slow you down. 
Now. You'll need this. I can't take it. Stop. Him. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. You take it out. Or you run. Got it? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Rambo. what all the gumshoes say, rookie. Yes, I did indeed. Herb. Oh, no, son, I ain't getting no herb. Oh, that, there it is. I didn't recognize it. <laughs> I mean, that, that don't look like no thyme or oregano or basil I've ever seen. What kind of herb they got? Uh, I think I got that, yeah. In honor of those who served as raccoons. Oh, yeah, that's right. I need to go up there and do that. So I think this lion thing, when you put together these pieces, it spits out a medallion for you to stick in that statue. Is that what happens? Okay, so the first one was ram lion crown. So crown, lion, ram. And then the, right. the next First one. Floor of the West Wing. But I gotta go through the shutter area in there too. Passage isn't open yet. Okay, so there's gonna be a statue for each. Oh, your half hour's up. Thank you for playing. Oh, you guys. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably spent the first 15, 20 minutes sitting there yakking. I want to find out what's happening here. She's the one at Umbrella responsible for unleashing the virus. Seems to be evolving much faster than expected. You've got to be kidding me. God only knows what's down here. What the hell? It'll be a giant all zombie crawl. I'll get you, you fucker! Lita! Uh, Jerry, I'm coming! I'm not handing over anything! Oh, Jesus Christ! That? Ah. You don't know what you're up against. The whole place is coming down. That's a pretty damn good idea. I have played every single one, and this is definitely one of my favorites. The combining the uh, different ammunition was a lot of fun. Man, I thought you were all wiped out. Ah, Shingo. Ah, Shingo. Was that just a block of tofu? Yes. What, did it say something in Japanese? Yes. Do you know what it said? No. Okay, but it was... Japanese, wasn't it? I, I don't know. 
Why was there a tofu cop in the sewer? <laughs> what is what is Konami and Capcom trying to do to peoples? Okay, it's worth noting that the 30 minute time limit carries over to a second playthrough. You might only have a couple of minutes left, but if you are particularly keen to play from the starting section again, then go right ahead. Oh, so if you try to play it again, it's only going to give you whatever your remaining time is. I don't know. It was good in quality, but I don't know if I'm going to purchase it. I mean, it, it looks good. It was playing well. The controls feel better than they ever had. Yeah, it's out of time there. I want to find out what's happening here. She's the oh, we can see it again with the tofu cop. The virus. Seems to be evolving much faster than expected. You gotta be kidding me. God only knows what's down here. What the hell? It'll be all over Let me soon. Go! I'll get you, you fucker! Nita! Sherry, I'm coming! I'm not handing over anything! Oh, Jesus Christ! Who's that? Ah! You don't know what you're up against. The whole place is coming down. That's a pretty damn good idea. This is Hunk from Alpha Team. Man, I thought you were all wiped out. <coughs> huh? Giant block of tofu. This is Ashingo? Or something like that. Either ha or ah. And it was sheen. Wouldn't go be... She needs to go... Isn't that uh, five? Matter? Maybe... Uh, shingo translation... Ladder, degree, stairs, or step. Oh, so he's like, where the hell's the ladder? <laughs> tofu cop in the sewer wants to know where the hell the ladder is. Well, I don't blame you, Tofu cop, man. That's ruining your nice soy flavor. Yes, ladder. That is. He's looking for the ladder. Okay, that's just too funny. Ashigo has a different... My cousins are on their way over with the... Uh, well, when are they going to be here? Do I need to get dressed? So when you do when you do this like this, you put it all one word like that, right? Yes.
<laughs> yeah, you like that? Oh, yeah, baby. There we go. I'm sure they'll enjoy that on Twitter. Okay, cool. Well, that was fun. I, I don't know if I'm going to purchase it. It's tempting, but I don't know. I enjoyed that.